Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e Monster Tactics. And yes, we're going to talk about the homunculus. Um, it is one of those peculiar creatures that you can use in your game. It has a very low challenge rating. It has like a zero challenge rating, in fact. So how do you use the homunculus in your Dungeons and Dragons adventure or games? How do you do that and be effective? Well, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to wind back the clock a bit and try to remember a movie called The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. In that particular movie, there was a homunculus, a little creature with wings that was created by the evil sorcerer. And that particular movie actually indicates how you should play out your homunculus. So the way that that creature responds and interacts with the player's characters or the characters in the movie is the same thing you want to do. That is how you play a homunculus or a wizard construct of any kind. Use that as your template. That means that this is not a combat monster. The homunculus is not a combat monster. It is a spy. What sort of things are uh, going to be useful for a homunculus? Why would you actually create one of these things? Well, um, a wizard, a mage, a sorcerer will create a homunculus because, one, they act as very, very good spies. They are a scout. They can be used as a scout to scout out things. They can be used to pass messages from one place to another. And they can act as a servant to just carry small items back and forth to the creator should they want that sort of thing to take place. So I'm not going to roll out a battle map for this. There's, there's no point. I just said it's not a combat monster. So that means there's no point actually having a battle mat or miniatures or anything like that. Use all theatre of the mind. There's really no point in doing it any other way. So what do you do? If this creature does get into combat, what can you do? Because generally what you should be doing with this creature is you be, should be making sure that it's hiding and scurrying around and not being seen. And it's doing its job as a scout and a spy. But what do you do if you do get into combat? Let's have a quick discussion about that, shall we? What I would recommend to you is start off with the basics. It comes down to cover where you can hide and put yourself. So you're going to take the dodge action and fly up and away because it can fly 40 feet. If there is no cover anywhere for you to hide behind or get behind with your little creature. If there is cover available within reach, within flying speed of 40 feet, then use the disengage action and fly up and away to wherever, wherever that particular cover is. You can use, if you're not already engaged in close quarter combat, then move and use the stealth action. Okay, make a stealth, get, a, get your dungeon master, Allow you, hopefully your dungeon master will allow you to make a stealth check, find some cover and try to hide. Total cover is better than um, light obscurity or heavy obscurity. So that's what the creature would be looking for. Remember, this creature is actually a reflection of the creator, the mage, and the wizard, and they are quite bright. They should be able to figure these sorts of things out. Make sure you're flying. Do not be walking around. Flying up and away, up and away like Superman. And fighting only should happen when they're, they're trapped. If you trap the homunculus or the homunculus is grappled in some way, then that is the time that you're going to use an attack because its attack is really insignificant. The homunculus, sorry, the homunculus does not have a particularly good uh, stealth or dexterity modifier. It's only a plus two. So my suggestion to you is you could beef that up a little bit by giving it some um, advantages as uh, the dungeon master and make it a little bit more interesting. Otherwise, it's going to really struggle to hide and stealth around. If you're rolling a 20-sided dice and adding a plus two, the chances are the player's characters, if there's four to six of them, are going to notice this creature almost pretty much all of the time. So that's not going to be very helpful to you. So you need to be patient. This creature has to rely on its tiny size and total cover. 
So be patient when moving from one piece of cover to another so you do not reveal the location of this creature. Otherwise, she's all over, mate, and uh, there's nothing that you can do about it. How do you create a homunculus? Well, the simple fact is a homunculus is created by rare magic through a ritual, usually by shaping some sort of figurine using clay, ash, mandrake root, and blood from the creator, the mage, the wizard who's actually creating this thing. Now, you don't necessarily have to use blood from the creator, but I think that's far more interesting. And it sort of means there's definitely a tie between the creator and the homunculus, the construct. The homunculus construct acts as an extension of the mage. That means they share their thoughts, their senses, that sight, hearing, smell, are all linked. They have a mystical bond that allows them a connection unlike any bond that you would normally come across. They share languages, so the homunculus will understand the same languages as the, uh, the wizard or mage or sorcerer who created it. You can only ever have one homunculus, and creating a second one will not work because it will fail, it will not come to life. Uh, when the creator dies, the homunculus will also die, but if the homunculus dies, it does not mean that the creator dies. In the past, it would cause a little bit of pain or anguish or um, it would damage or uh, drain the psyche of uh, the wizard or creator. In Dungeons & Dragons 5e, that's not the case. My suggestion to you is ignore that, and when the homunculus is destroyed, have it affect the wizard mage, sorcerer, or creator in some way, because that's far more interesting. Now, last point. A smart wizard who has access to many magic items and spells will find a way for the, for the homunculus to have invisibility. It doesn't necessarily have to be greater invisibility, but the lesser version of invisibility would make a huge difference to a creature that really will struggle trying to find a way of hiding from those dastardly um, adventurers. So if you have any questions or feedback on this particular video, let me know now. Um, if you want to uh, watch more of my videos, I do appreciate it. There's plenty for players and dungeon masters. I have a Patreon account now, so you can go and check it out there and support the channel by funding me there. Um, I have affiliate links down in the uh, description for the book depository and Amazon, which you can also um, help support the channel because I get commissions from that. Now remember, share, like, and subscribe. You can hit the bell button if you really want, but I live stream so much it's probably not going to be necessary. But if you don't want to miss those, by all means hit them. And, hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.